Hello all, I am Dr. Jisha Ji from Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. In this session, I will be handling EC312 Object Oriented Programming Module 5. The topic covered is Introduction to Android. So in today's class, we will be handling an introduction to Android, different versions of Android and Android architecture. Introduction in the introductory part, we will study about the basics of Android operating system, why using an Android, history of Android and features of Android operating system. Android. You all are familiar with the Android that you see in your mobile devices. Now we can see what is Android in detail. It contains a complete set of software for mobile devices like smartphone and tablets. So these are some touchscreen devices which uses the Android. Now we can see in detail what does this set of software contains. It contains Linux based operating system, middleware and key mobile application. So what do you mean by Linux based operating system? Operating system you all are familiar with the Windows Linux operating system that you see in your laptops and desktops. And Linux based means actually this Android it is developed on Linux kernel and next comes a middleware middleware means it is a set of libraries which helps the application in your devices to interact with the operating system kernel and it en enhance the working of your applications Next is the key mobile application. Key mobile application is also a set of built-in application that you get while you load the Android in your phones. So these are the built-in application that you see while you open your mobile phones. That is the phone, SMS like messages, Gmail, calculator, camera, etc. are some application. That are some inbuilt application that you see in your system. Next is it is owned by Google and it is handled by OHA. OHA is Open Handset Alliance. Now we can see in the detail what is an Open Handset Alliance. Open Handset Alliance OHA. So here it is a consortium of 84 companies like Google, Vodafone, Intel, Samsung, etc. And these companies have been categorized into five. That is software companies which are like Google, eBay, etc. Mobile operators like Vodafone, Airtel, etc. Semiconductor companies like Intel. Handset manufacturing companies like HTC, Samsung. Commercialization companies like Telica. And these have been created this consortium has been created on November 5th 2007 and led by Google it was actually introduced in order to advance open standards and provide services to these companies and to help in the manufacturing of handset using Android platforms why Android about 80% of the world's mobile devices are using Android as their operating system. So you can see that it is one of the powerful as well as successful operating system which has been used in the mobile devices in the market today. So now we are going to see why Android or what are the features that which makes it so popular. So the first feature is that it is open source. That means the source code is available for free. That means it includes a license for the users to change the operating system in any way they choose. That means it is freely available and you can change the operating system according to your needs. Next point is that it is customizable operating system. This operating system is basically based on the Linux kernel as well as Linux is also an open source and you can easily customize the operating system Android operating system according to the user's needs that is why it is called customizable open source means it is freely available and you can change it and next is reduced cost of development and overall complexity you can just start developing an Android application by just downloading Android SDK and necessary tools so this feature make it costless. 
Next feature is that larger community and developer reach. Since Android is simplified, the extent to which developers can reach is quite high. And more mobile service providers are adapting Android onto their devices. Next is inter app integration. Inter app integration means two apps that have been developed for different purposes can be integrated for providing a particular services. And such cases possible in Android. Next is higher success ratio. You can see a mass liking among the mobile operators to use Android as operating system in their handset. So this increased demand for more and more Android programs. Next, rich development environment, variety of applications can be developed. That means uh, by downloading the Android set of tools, SDK and techniques, we can easily develop an Android application. So this, with this set of tools, SDK, etc., we are easily able to modify the operating system as well as you can easily make a program which runs as an application on this Android operating system. So these are the basic features which make this Android so much popular among the mobile operators as well as the mobile handset uh, manufacturers. History of Android. Actually the Android was initially developed by a person named Andy Rubin of Android Incorporation in 2003. And in 2005, Google has acquired the Android Incorporation. And in 2007, Android announces the development of Android operating system. And by 2008, HTC launched the first Android mobile. So this is about the history of Android. Next features of Android. The first feature is the user interface. Android operating system has a basic screen which provides a beautiful user interface which is associated with the activity. Next is the messaging. It supports messaging services like SMS, MMS, etc. As well as it also supports GCM that is Google Cloud Messaging. Next feature is the web browser. It also provides a powerful web browser and this web browser is based on open source webkit layout engine and next is the connectivity you can see that from your mobile phone you can connect to different devices through different connections like bluetooth wi-fi or it can be a cellular connection like gsm edge etc and next it supports storage the data inside this font can be stored in the form of a light relational database using a light relational database and such a database called SQLite. Then multi-touch facility. Multi-touch facility means it supports multiple touch which was initially made available in the handsets like HTC etc. And here the multi-touch means scrolling or using two fingers you can zoom the content and these all are using the multi-touch facility provided by the Android operating system. Next is a multitasking. So multitasking means Android support multitasking where users can perform multiple tasks simultaneously. That means while hearing music you may be typing or sending a message. Next is multi-language. Multi-language means it supports multiple languages. That means it also supports single direction and bi-directional text features. Next is Android versions. Next is Android versions. So we can see about various versions that have been launched by the Google till now. And they have been using the name of some suites to mention each and every version they have been developed so far. But the earlier, the first version was launched with HTC Dream Set and the version was Android 1.0 and it was actually implemented against Apple's iPhone operating system to OS 2 and now it has reached 
tell the implementation of pi that is 9.0 and also the latest version that is android turn is also being developed now and we can see various versions so here from 1.5 it has been named using the name of some sweets so the version 1.5 is called android cupcake 1.6 as android donut 2.0 to 2.1 eclair 2.2 it is froyo 2.3 it is gingerbread 3.0 to 3.1 it is honeycomb 4 it is ice cream sandwich 4.1 to 4.3 it is jelly bean 4.4 it is kit kat 5 it is lollipop 6 marshmallow 7 nugget 8 oreo and the latest version it is pie android pie it is in version 9 and android 10 is also being developed by google android architecture so next is android architecture now we can see about how the internal structure of an android look like and actually i told you it is a set of softwares and this set of softwares are arranged in form of layers or sections and you can call it as a software stack of components to support mobile device needs and what are the software stack contain it contains a linux kernel i told you android works on the top of linux so the first basic layer is a linux kernel and it contains a set of libraries and a application framework which support the application which are run on the android devices now we can see how the architecture works in detail this slide introduced to you the various sessions that you will see inside the android architecture actually there are five sections the first one is the linux kernel which is the base layer or the bottom layer on which the android operating system works so the basic layer is the linux kernel layer and next comes a set of libraries which makes the working of the application easier and next comes the application framework which helps directly the applications of the android operating systems and fourth one is the applications like fonts camera sms mms etc are the various application and the application layer contains a list of application provided by the operating system and the final session is the android runtime library which contain a dalvik virtual machine and some core libraries so there are five sections in the android architecture now we can see how these sections are arranged in the layers of android next is android architecture in the form of layers in the last slide you have seen that there are five sections and these five sections are arranged in the form of four layers and you can see that the four layers are the first or the important layer in the android architecture is the linux kernel and the linux kernel contains the main part which interacts with the hardware of the mobile device and this kernel or the link that is the linux kernel provides an abstraction between the hardware part and the operating system so here you can see set of drivers like display driver camera driver etc and what do you mean by this driver driver is a set of software which handles the hardware in your mobile device and the linux kernel provide all such drivers which handles the hardware part of your mobile device and also performs set of other functions like networking memory management of your mobile devices etc next comes the next layer which contains two sections that is libraries and android runtime so these libraries are normally written in the c or c++ and it supports the 
for example you can see opengl es etc which supports the 2d and 3d graphics webkit which supports the web browser sqlite supports the data storage ssl gives the internet security etc so there are set of libraries that is which provide some services to the application and next comes the android runtime it contains two portions that is core libraries and dalvik virtual machine so that dalvik virtual machine is a kind of java virtual machine you all are familiar with java virtual machine and this dalvik virtual machine is similar to java virtual machine and it is designed and optimized for android and this uh, dalvik virtual machine make use of linux core features like a memory management multi threading which is the only feature found in java language so this uh, dalvik virtual machine enables every android application to run in its own process with its own instance of dalvik virtual machine and uh, the android runtime also provide a set of core libraries which enables the android application developers to write android application using standard java programming so these are the two sections in the next layer and next comes a application framework layer so i have told you the core libraries enables you to a core libraries libraries in the android runtime enable you to write java programming so here in the application framework you can see that all the libraries that is available in the lower portion that is in the library sections are available to the application through this application framework layer so the application framework layer provides many higher level services to the application in the form of java classes and the application developer are allowed to make use of these services in their applications so some examples are activity manager which control all the aspects of application life cycle and activity stack you will be studying about the activity in the uh, part 2 and next is the content providers which provides the or which helps you to share data with other application and uh, view system which helps you to create application user interface so these are some set of java classes which helps you to create some applications next comes the application which contains the oh, uh, which contains a basic application that is available in your mobile devices and you can see that all applications are uh, all application comes in the topmost layer and the core portion of this android comes in the bottom layer that is the linux kernel layer and the application that means uh, the basic applications will be seen in the application layer like browser home then the phone mail etc comes in the application layer so these are the four layers which comes in the android architecture thank you